in Module 2, Lesson 24, we make a transition from dividends with whole numbers to dividends with decimals. And uh, again, we're going to be working with two-digit divisors. Okay, let's go over these uh, problems here. The first thing I want to tell you is uh, ignore this. It's not the way we did it in class. and it, It's confusing. It has the right idea, but I'd like to write it a different way. So let's go on and start with C. And we're going to relate these two facts. We'll talk about a few ways to do these. Here I have 24. 24 tenths in unit form. Divided by 4. And that equals 6 tenths. So let's start by decomposing D. And we want to get back to this point right here. There's more than one way to do it, but we're going to use the facts from C to help us with D. So I have 2 and 4 tenths divided by 4 divided by 10. I decomposed my divisor into divided by 4 divided by 10. We could have done it the other way, divided by 10, divided by 4. We might go through that to uh, demonstrate how we get to the same answer. Well, if we look at this problem here, we can see that it is the same as this problem here. And we know that the answer to that was 6 tenths. So I'm going to simplify the expression in the parentheses to 6 tenths. Now we have 6 tenths divided by 10. And we know that we simply move to a place to the right, or we can move the decimal to the left. And 6 tenths divided by 10 is 6 hundredths. So the answer is 6 hundredths. Now we could have done this the other way as well. I'm just going to start with 2 and 4 tenths divided by 10 divided by 4. Okay, that's another way to do it. And 2 and 4 tenths equal, uh, divided by 10 is 24 hundredths divided by 4. We can change that to unit form, 24 hundredths divided by 4 equals 6 hundredths. And we can change that to our uh, standard form. Either way, you can see that we get six hundredths. Let's go on to another one. Okay, let's start with G. We're going to change that to unit form. Thirty-four hundredths divided by two equals seventeen hundredths. We're going to try to relate these facts. So we have three and four tenths. This time I'm going to divide by 10 first, then divide by 2. 3 and 4 tenths divided by 10 is 34 hundredths, and that's divided by 2. We can now see that we're back to our original fact here, right? And I should have written in my standard form. So we know that in the case of G, 34 hundredths divided by 2 is 17 hundredths. So here we have 34 hundredths divided by 2 once again equals 17 hundredths. All right, uh, going on to I, we have 45 hundredths divided by 9 equals 5 hundredths. Write that in standard form. 5 hundredths. Now we'll take the problem J and we'll decompose it in a way that it goes back to our original fact of 45 hundredths divided by 9. So we have 45 hundredths divided by 9 divided by 10. And if we look at this portion here in the parentheses, it's identical to our expression here. So we have 5 hundredths, and now we can divide that by 10, and we get 5 thousandths. 
And of course, we could do these in uh, another order. We could, uh, in the case of J, do divided by 2 divided by 10. And in the case of, or that was H rather, and J, we could have done divided by 10 divided by 9. We would have gotten the same answer. But I'm trying to relate the facts of the corresponding pro, uh, uh, problems. All right. Let's go on to some more. Well, we have another kind of problem here. Use place value reasoning and the first quotient to compute the second quotient. Explain your thinking. All right, so we have 46 and 5 tenths divided by 9 and 3 tenths. So we know that we're going to see the same digits, but they're going to be in different places because we, are, we have the same dividend but the divisor is 10 times greater. So, I could do the problem out, but let's do a little thinking here. If, if the divisor is 10 times greater, and what's the same? and the dividend is the same. The quotient will be one-tenth of the first quotient. Let's uh, let's test that. So I have. I'm going to decompose a little differently. So I have 46 and 5 tenths. I'm going to decompose this time divided by 5 divided by 10. I can do that uh, because I'll end up with the same answer whether I switch these or not. So in the past we divided by 5 first, and now we're dividing by or divided by 10 first, and now we're dividing by 5 first. So I know that my quotient for this part here is going to be this. So I'm going to take 9 and 3 tenths and divide it by 10, and I get 93 hundredths. So again, we just switched these around. Normally I do uh, 46 and 5 tenths divided by 10, then divide by 5. I'll switch that around so that I can use the information from the first problem to solve the second now my explanation is uh, frankly going to be about the same down here again we have the same dividend but our divisor is different and with the second problem the divisor is ten times greater so I'm going to take the second problem and go through the procedure we went through before I'm going to divide it by three then divide it by ten since I know that this part here is the same as this part, I can simply substitute 17 hundredths. I can divide that by 10, and I get 17 thousandths. Again, the explanation holds. If the divisor is 10 times greater, well, the divisor is 10 times greater because 30 is 10 times greater than 3. The dividend is the same. Yes, the dividend is the same. The quotient will be one-tenth of the first quotient. Indeed, my quotient for my second one is one-tenth the value of the first one. Now we're going to hit a couple word problems. One from the problem set, or practice set, and the other uh, from the homework. I'll, I'll get you set up with that. It's not too complex, but I suspect a lot of you don't mind a little guidance when it comes to the word problems. Okay, I picked this one because it's a little bit complicated, and I think it's important that you see examples of complex uh, word problems solved using our uh, tape diagrams. So we're going to start by reading, and like I said, if you're not interested in this, go fast forward to the one from the homework. The total weight of 30 bags of flour and 4 bags of sugar is 12 or 42 and 6 tenths. If each bag of sugar weighs 75 hundredths of a kilogram, what is the weight of each bag of flour? 
Well, here we have the hole. And the hole's divided into two parts. We've got our sugar, and we've got our flour. I'll represent the flour with a bigger portion. And our hole is 4d2 and 6 tenths. Now the sugar is divided into four bags. And we know that each bag is 75 hundredths. And then we have the flour and each one of those is divided, or the flour is divided into 30 bags. We're not going to draw 30 little individual bags. We're going to kind of darken that line there. And we'll put in uh, number 30. Alright, so we want to find the weight of each bag of flour. So we are interested in the value of this part. Okay. This is going to be our flour, and I could have left this uh, just plain blank. And once we find the weight of the flour, we're going to, as I put above there, break it down into 30 parts. <clears throat> okay, so we know the weight of each bag of sugar. We know that there's four of them. So I can write 75 hundredths times 4. That's what's represented here in the tape diagram, this portion. So we'll complete that. We get a 20, regroup the 2, and a 4 times 7 is 28, plus 2 is 30. We'll put in our decimal here, and we have 3 pounds. Alright, so I need to take this part out, and what's left over is just plain flour. So I'm going to do that. When we take it out, we're going to subtract 42 and 6 tenths minus 3. Okay, remember, lining up the decimals, and I don't need two decimal places, I just need one. We'll subtract, I get a 6, regroup a 4, make it a 3, this is a 12, put in our decimal. 12 minus 3 is 9, and 3 minus nothing is 3. So the value here is now 39 and 6 tenths. We're going to split 39 and 6 tenths into 30 equal amounts. And when we do that, we divide. So I'm going to write 39 and 6 tenths divided by 30. I'm going to have 39 and 6 tenths divided by 10 divided by 3. 39 and 6 tenths divided by 10 is 3 and 96 hundredths. We divide that by 3. At this point we could set up a tableau. And it's kind of easy because we've done this before. We are dealing with a one digit divisor. I like to put that decimal in ahead of time. And 3 goes into 3 once. 3 times 3 is 3. Subtract I get a 0. Bring down that 9 in the tenths place. And I have 3 uh, goes into 9 tenths. Well, 9 tenths divided by 3 is 3 tenths. Notice that my digit is in the tenths place. We subtract, we get a 0. Bring down the 6. And that's 6 hundredths. 6 hundredths divided by 3 is 2 hundredths. So my answer now for each bag of flour is 1 and 32 hundredths pounds. So I can make my statement. The weight of each bag of flour is one and thirty two hundredths pounds. All right, let's go on to that one that's uh, part of our homework. We'll read the problem. Chris rode his bike along the same route every day for 60 days. He logged that he had gone exactly 127 and 8 tenths miles. How many miles did he bike each day? Show your work to explain how you know. Well, he's on the same route, so he's going the same distance every day. We know our hole. Our hole 
is 100, 27, and 8 tenths. We're going to take that hole and we're going to break it into 60 parts. Again, making 60 boxes is not practical. So we're going to take this number, 127 and 8 tenths, and break it into 60 parts. Well, let me just give you a few hinters with that. We know that we're breaking it into equal parts, so you know we're dividing. The thing you want to do to make this process easier is to take that 60 and decompose it into divided by 10, divided by 6. So we'll take our whole, divided by 10, and divided by 6. And we'll have our distance for each day. Now, how many miles did he bike over the course of two weeks? Well, we find out how much he does in one day. I'm just going to say, uh, put that down there, one day. And that's what we want to know. And once we do that, we simply find out how far he goes in two weeks. Well, two weeks is a different unit. We know that there's seven days in a week. So how many days in two weeks? All we have to do is take one unit equals whatever we have. What that question mark, that's that value right here. Okay, so we need to find out two weeks worth of no, uh, units. And you'll find that by multiplying the question mark times the number of days in two weeks, which you should be able to figure out without a problem. 